JRTV is back with the 2003 NASCAR Winston Cup Series as we're here at the Talladega Super Speedway in Talladega, Alabama for the EA Sports 500. This is the 27th race on the 2003 campaign. Just six races left to crown a 2003 champion and we'll see how the points shuffle with one of the craziest races left on the calendar. I'm Joe Rakowski here to bring you all the coverage here on JRTV of the EA Sports 500, one of the more chaotic races of the Winston Cup series season and with it being so late in the season this is a race where those championship drivers those drivers in the battle for the championship they are going to dread come here as they know anything can happen while Brett Seward could have a bad day and he could lose points to those drivers behind him those drivers behind him could also equally have just as bad days if not worse days than Brett Seward and end up leaving with less points than what Brett Seward gains on them it's going to be an exciting one for sure throughout the whole 38 lap race to see how it all works out in terms of the points and when we look at the point standings it narrowed up after the race at Lowe's where Brett Sierra had a dismal day finished outside of the top 25 after it looked like he was going to gain big points on Mathis Wells who entered second in the points instead Wells rallied back from damage under a caution flag to finish inside the top 15 while Brett Sierra finished back in the 27th position netting Wells points on Brett Sierra getting him to within 200 points of the points leader while third place Riley Spurrier to fourth place Keyshawn Richardson and fifth place Chris Jericho are trying to fight back to get within 200 points. They're still there with a shot at the championship if they can keep gaining like they did last race at Lowe's. But both Spurly Tube and Jericho gained points at Lowe's while Keyshawn Richardson ended up losing points from an early crash uh, that took him out of the race and dropped him behind Brett Sierra in the running order. And then outside the top five, watch for drivers like Luke Rennie and Eli Bright. They're there, quietly there, sitting just outside the top five in points. However, if they keep having good days, they can get themselves up in the championship fight. And if not inside the championship fight, they can be bound for a top five in points with drivers like Jericho or Richardson or Riley Spirly Tube come season's end. For those drivers in the championship fight, Brett Sierra starts the lowest of them in 30th place for the number 25 car. A daunting task to move through the field to try and get a lap lead for five bonus points and also avoid all the trouble that goes around every corner here at Talladega. Other drivers up in the championship fight qualified well. Chris Jericho enters fifth in the points. He'll start fifth here today. Could he possibly get up to the lead for five bonus points early on to get that out of the way? He won this race back in the 2000 season. Mathis Wells, who enters second in the points, starts this race in ninth place. Also on the inside lane, also with a shot to lead a lap early on for five bonus points. If he can accomplish that, he has something to hold over Brett Sierra's head throughout the entire race until maybe the 25 gets up there and tries to lead lap for himself. Third in points, Riley Spurrier Tube has been very, very consistent this season. Just has one victory on the season. However, he knows how to get it done in the Winston Cup Series. He knows how to just gain points whenever he needs it. Right now, he starts in 11th place here at Talladega once again and a spot to try and get an early bonus points for leading a lap. And then Luke Rennie, the quietest driver of the season, up there sixth in the point standings. He'll start this race in 14th place here today in that number 88 car. He's Spurrier Tube's teammate. This team knows how to bring fast, Super Speedway cars, tracks like Daytona or Talladega. We'll see if Luke Rennie, who starts inside the top 15, can try and gain more points on Brett Sierra like he has the last few races. And also to join all those championship drivers up at the front of the field, watch for the drivers and the cars that have won races here in the past. On pole is Ryan Wilson. He's never won in the Winston Cup Series. However, this number 15 car went to victory lane at this track last season with Lathan Strickland at the helm. So Ryan Wilson is now in a car that he knows can win at a super speedway like Talladega. He starts the race on pole position. His teammate's not too far behind him. We'll see if Ryan Wilson can try and get to victory lane for the second straight season with the number 15 car here at Talladega. Conrad Evans, who starts in second place, won here earlier in the season, looking for the Talladega sweep on the season. And when he won earlier in the season, it didn't come easily. He had to avoid a massive crash off turn number four, where he saw himself narrowly miss just a few wrecked race cars. And then he bowed his way to the front Front to get to victory lane in the number 31 car. If Evans can try and do the sweep, it'd be the first time in a long time someone's won both races here at Talladega. And then Lathan Strickland starting in fourth place. He's with the new team Hedrick Motorsports this season, but he won this. He won here last season in the number 15. So he knows how to get it done at Talladega. It's his home track. He'd love nothing more than to get his first victory for Hedrick Motorsports right here in front of the hometown crowd at the Talladega Super Speedway. As mentioned, Chris Jericho in fifth won this race back in 2000. If he wants to gain points on a shot at the championship, he might need to win this one here today. To his outside, Sebastian Kukulon, who won this race back in the 2001 season. RCR's first and only victory of that season. We'll see if Kukulon can repeat the magic. He's not yet won this season. Could he possibly get back to victory lane for the first time since 2002 race number six 
and do it again here at Talladega. And the car he drove to victory lane in the 2001 race starts in seventh place, but this time being driven by Justin Atkins. Atkins has two victories this season. All three of his Winston Cup Series career victories have come on mile and a half racetracks. We'll see if he can break that string and maybe get to victory lane on a super speedway for RCR and get that number 30 back to victory lane like it did two seasons ago. And then starting in ninth place, Mathis Wells in number 20, won at Daytona earlier in the season. It's his only win so far this season. Last season's champion, it's hard to believe, only has one win, and it came at the Daytona night race. However, Mathis Wells, very confident in his abilities at these super speedways, these plate-style racetracks where you're going to be drafting in a big pack. If he can stay out of trouble, watch for the number 20. He usually finds himself up near the front at the end of these super speedway races. A little bit further back, some other drivers to watch for, like Evan Hunter, who won the Daytona 500 earlier this season. He starts a little bit further back, but he said after qualifying, not worried about how we qualify, more worried about how the race goes. And then watch for some other sorts back, like Sabet Osgin won this race last season for an underdog, Haas Carter Motorsports in the number 26. Now he drives for a team that won the Daytona 500 last season, Fitz Brownshaw Racing, owned by Eli Bright. We'll have to see if that number 81 can find success in the second straight season with Sabet Osgin at the helm of a race car. And at the back of the field, two cars that failed inspection, Jordan Stout and Nathan Baird are at the back of the field. They'll start 41st and 42nd. And unfortunately for Nathan Ormond, he also failed inspection. But as he was a go or go homer, that put him out. It put Jason Albert into the race. He's going to try and do his best to try and get that number 41 a good finish after not knowing he was going to be in the race at the end of qualifying yesterday. We'll now go take a look at the track facts here for the Talladega Super Speedway. It's a cloudy overcast day, but still pretty warm, 79 degrees, and just a little bit of wind. I don't think that'll play an issue, just four miles an hour in the east direction. This is a 38-lap race, just over 101 miles. There's no pit stop required here today, so the pit crew's not really needed unless their car gets involved in a crash they have to repair or if their car is an issue under the green flag. There's 33 degrees of banking in the corners, only 18 degrees in the trial, and only 3 degrees whenever you're on a straightaway. And three of the last four Talladega races have gone to the Chevrolet. So watch for the Chevys here today. They know how to get it done as of late here at Talladega. The only non-Chevy winner in that in that time frame was uh, the number 26 last season was Matt Osgan at the helm for Haas Carter Motorsports. It's about time to get going. It's going to track side fire the cars up for the EA Sports 500 right here at the Talladega Super Speedway. Drivers, start your engines! Forty-two cars rolling. They all know they have a shot to win here at Talladega. We'll see which of the 42 can get it done at the end of the day. Let's talk about the man starting in eighth place because as of late, he's been a bad luck charm. Number 16, Zachary DeLello. Think back to two weeks ago in the Southern 500 at Darlington where he was in the start of that massive crash in turns three and four where he ended up getting spun by Zachary Fitzwater Sr. who was coming off pit road with fresh tires. Fitzwater got into DeLello, spun DeLello around damage that number 16 beyond repair. And then last race at Lowe's, under the caution flag, he got involved in the mess, which had none of his doing with Mathis Wells and Sarah Kirchner making contact. DeLello got the worst of it in the number 16 car. Two straight weeks of bad luck, and right here at Talladega, where you need a lot of luck to get to victory lane. Maybe all the bad luck is cleared. Only have good luck today. Maybe the 16 DeLello can get to victory lane for the first time this season in that number 16 car. And then back here, number 32, Matt Tuck. Earlier this season at Talladega, finished runner-up to Conrad Evans. We know when we come to these Super Speedway plate tracks, you can have some underdogs win like Tuck or Carter or someone else further back in the field. Matt Tuck nearly did it earlier this season, and there's no reason to believe why he won't be able to have a shot at the end again here today at Talladega. And then just outside the top 20 to start, Sarah Kirsch with a 33. Think about how great she started opening this season where it looked like she had a shot, a realistic shot, at getting to the championship. However, now we're near to the end of the season. She has not yet won this season, looking for her first ever win in the Winston Cup Series. And think back to Daytona where she had a shot to win late, but it didn't fall the way she was looking for. Now here at Talladega, can she possibly get to victory lane to become the third RCR car to win this season? and maybe get herself back up near the top five in the points. The pace car makes left turn to pit road, and it leaves the field in the hands of Ryan Wilson on pull for Dale Earnhardt Incorporated. Then you have Evans and Zydell, Strickland and Jericho, the front five. They enter the trial. Remember, the start finish line down towards turn one. They have a little ways to go before we get to the green flag. Ryan Wilson, Evans, the front row. 
as we come down to take the green flag. The EA Sports 500 at Talladega is underway. The green flag is in the air. No time wasted by Zydell now as they go down the back straightaway. They're going to fan out three and four wide. Everyone trying to fight down to the bottom. Zydell clears traffic. Four wide for a second. Mathis Wells moves to the inside trying to get five points early on. Riley's pretty up in the same boat as well in the 28. They move to second and third. They all move up. Now they move down to the inside together. Mathis Wells trying to lead the first lap for five bonus points. That, that could be big right there because Brett Sears at the back. We don't know if the 25 is going to lead a lap here today. Into the trioval. Mathis Wells. Five bonus points for the number 20. Big right there to get it done on lap one. Yeah, you never know. You're not guaranteed. A lot of cars lead laps at Talladega and Daytona, but you're never guaranteed to do it with how much it shuffles. So Mathis Wells got out of the way. He knows he has those five points locked up. Now his big chance is going to try and beat Brett Sierra in that number 25. Roger Crown Jr. to the inside. Luke Rennie to the middle in the 88 car. Three wide for the lead. Hernandez with Roberto Crown Jr. And already three and four wide racing further back in the field. Crown with Fitzwater behind him, battling through turns three and four. Fitzwater going to jump to the inside of the number two car. There's the pack from far away. See already Jason Albert, the, the 41, a little bit off pace and has lost the draft. So an issue on the 41 car. Crown leads the lap. Fitzwater has the line to the inside, but Crown gets down nicely in the 43. Four wide to the corner. Tim Gary made the move. Those MB2 cars always Always a threat when we come to the drafting style racetracks. Think back to Hunter's two victories. They came at Daytona and Talladega. The 500 earlier this season, Talladega in 2001. And then Tim Gary won Texas World back in 2001. So the MB2 cars, good when we come to the drafting style racetracks. Gary's moving through the field. See, Miller and Atkins were kind of rubbing there into turn three. Kept their cars going straight though. And how about Jordan Stout? Started 41st in this number six car. Three laps in, he's up to the top five. That's how fast things change at Talladega, how quickly drivers can make their way through the field. You see Crown Jr. doing a really good job leading the field. Fitzwater right behind him. Then you have Stout and Chung. Eli Bright moving up. 17, Matthew Burnett. 42, Nathan Stapleton. Burnett looking four wide to the corner. That forces Eli Bright up high. That's for fifth place. Then you have some underdogs on the bottom. Nathan Stapleton for Chip Ganassi Racing. You have Angel Gutierrez for AJ Foyt Racing. Henry Guo for Bar uh, Bardo Haas Racing. Sabet Osgin for Fitz Bradshaw. Stout going for second on Fitzwater. Crown's done a really good job being able to keep the lead since he's gotten it, but now he has someone new in second place. Fitzwater was in second that whole time. Now we'll see if someone knew, but maybe not, because here comes Laura Chung down to the end of the number nine car. Matthew Burnett even lower. Three wide, and here comes Bibi Ruiz from Elling Ultra Motorsports to the bottom. Those cars were quick in practice when they were in the draft. By themselves, not so fast, but I think that just shows that they're set up more for the drafting style of racing rather than going by themselves. And Bibi Ruiz has moved his way up to second place with Angel Gutierrez and Henry Guo right behind him. Here's his teammate. Kyle Lewis is just a few cars back. Ruiz going for the lead down the back straightaway. Has a run. Guo moves out on Gutierrez. Here comes Colin Lewis. Moving out on pole sitter Ryan Wilson. Four wide to the corner. A lot of four wide as well. Two DI cars in the middle of it. Ruiz going to take the lead on lap number five. See the pack once again from afar as they come off turn number four. Hungry pack of 41 cars as Albert has fallen back out of the draft. Whoa, now to the middle. Lewis to the bottom. Ruiz holding the lead. Comes Conrad Evans and Sebastian Kukulon, RCR teammates, nose to tail. They don't normally work well together. See if that changes. And then the two Jasper cars together on, on the uh, inside with Jude Martinell leading Tyler Belladonna up through the field as Evans takes it away in lap six. Ruiz at the lap. Evans to the lead. Here comes Kukulon. Has not yet won this season. Maybe can do it here today. Martinelli goes middle. Belladonna says, I'm going to go low. Here comes Riley Springham and Brett Sierra up to the front of the field. The points leader is up here with a shot to try and lead a lap for five points. See if he can get it done, though. We saw Mathis Wells lead the first lap. None of the other drivers up there in the championship fight have done it yet. Spurrow 2 going to try and do it on this lap. 28 car to the inside. 
Seera gets forced middle by Jacob Miller in the 57. And Riley Spridge, who've got a big enough run, he's clear of everyone. He'll lead this lap. Third in points gets five bonus points. So now second and third in points have gotten those laps led. Bonus points out of the way. See if any of them want to try and focus on most laps led bonus points for five more. Or if they're just fine right now. Mathis Wells is last in pack. Finally found a way down in line. Now he's going to start moving up. The two orange cars at the back, Osgood and then Wells. How about Thompson to the middle? Miller to the bottom. And here comes the 500 winner, Evan Hunter. 36 car making big moves. How about Jacob Miller for CLR Racing? He's had some pretty impressive runs over the course of his career in this underfunded number 57 car. Some big name team were to give him a shot. Who knows what he could do? Here comes Jay Rando. Won multiple races this season, looking for another one. Jericho, who was starting to move up, got forced middle of four by Zachary Delello. Nearly five wide as Richardson looked on Matt Tuck. Thompson led the lap from the outside lane. A big move there for the number five car. But Thompson's no stranger to success at these super speedway races. Won two of these back in the 2000 season. They won the 500, backed it up with a win. Oh, there goes Fitzwater with Osgood around. They're at the back of the field. No yellow yet. We stand to the green flag. Osgood and Fitzwater have impacted the inside. Kirchner and Baird are out of it. Four wide for a second. Thompson clears it. No yellow still. We stay under the green flag for now. Zach Delello, 16, moves out in front. And the pack is four wide from about third on back. Luke Rennie moving up with Delello. 16's going to get to lead this lap, I do believe. I'm actually shocked that wasn't a yellow flag. We saw a few cars back around that. Kind of figured that would be good enough to trigger a yellow, but NASCAR deemed it clean to keep going, but now some guys have lost the draft. We obviously have Albert out of it. Fitzwater is out of it. So is Osgin. Baird is out, and so is Kirchner. So Benny Lynn, last car in the draft as Nolan Lawrence goes for the lead. We have at the moment just 37 cars now in the lead pack. But how much longer will we last with 37? Because look at how they're fanning out through the corners, three and four wide. Lawrence going to take the lead from DeLello here. 16 got to lead that lap. Here comes Keyshawn Richardson. Help from his teammate Jay Rando. Richardson enters fourth in the points. Looking for five bonus points. Mathis Wells splits to the middle. DeLello got the run. I think he's going to keep the lead here, at least for the lap. But now Jay Rando forced out on Keyshawn Richardson, but lets him back in into turn one. Gutierrez coming back up to the front. That car was fast at Daytona in the 500. So watch for Angel Gutierrez. They brought a very good super speedway car at Daytona in the 500. Maybe they brought a similar one here to Talladega. Delello strong on the outside. Richardson, no pace in the middle. I just don't think he was getting the help he needed. Drop back there. Lawrence is even going to get clear. So outside worked there. 16 and 19 pushed themselves clear down to the inside lane. 10 laps complete at the line. Zachary DeLello leads Lawrence and Rando. The front three are clear. Tim Gary to Ford. Zydell is back near that crash. May have actually gotten a piece of it, but the 24 still going in the draft up into the top five. Here comes Lawrence for the lead. Down in front of Rando. Behind them, everyone. See Eli Bright. He found a hole in line and quickly took it behind Chung and in front of Mitchell Collins. Sierra still stuck middle of four. Chris Jericho there as well. In the number 18 car. Burnett diving to the apron. Brando, hoping that his teammate can get up there and help him to the ends of the 19. Lawrence trying to stay clear. I don't think he's going to, though. Oh, he did. Barely in front of Jay Brando. Now he has Roush cars lined up, but then his teammate, Laura Chung, is just a few cars back in the number nine car. Burnett tried to move out. Chung moved out first. I think Burnett was trying to help his teammate there and keep with him, but he's going to shuffle Burnett out instead. Now Eli Bright looking low as Noel Lawrence led the lap in the number 19 car. Here comes Eli Bright. Looked low on Chung. Nine back down in line. Looks like the pack has calmed down a little bit. Mostly two and three wide now. I think that's already at 41 Jason Albert. So they've had some issue on this 41 car. He is severely off the pace. We're about to catch him here. Completion of lap 12. That's everyone's worst nightmare where you're running in a pack is catching up to someone that's off the pace and wondering how you're going to be able to get around them and who's going to be the one to get held up and who's going to be able to find a way through. Seeing all red at the front, Everham dodges and Eli Bright's Budweiser Chevrolet. 
one, two, three. Here at the Talladega Super Speedway. It's a spotter's nightmare up at the front of the field. They're going to try and change that, though. Chung wants the lead. Has from Eli Bright. That shuffles Lawrence to the top and out of it. Here comes Keyshawn Richardson, still trying to get that lap led bonus points. Brett Sierra moving back up towards the front. Right down in front of Richardson, trying to block him off. There's Albert up the road. Here comes Hunter Reed to the inside, looking for a wide. Richardson, I think, is going to fend him off. No, he's not, Lord. Shung gets the run on the outside, but not clear the 99. And Hunter Reed to the inside with a big push. Hunter Reed to the front with Martinelli in the 67 behind him. And then Brett Sierra, the points leader. He's going to move out on Martinelli. Four wide for second. Reed's going to lead the lap. Sierra's going to try and lead this next one. He has a run to the inside, and we're catching lap traffic. Sierra looking for the five bonus points. Albert will be caught this lap. Sierra and Belladonna clear. Sierra slides up. Belladonna might try and look low here around Jason Albert. They're going to split him, it looks like. Albert in the middle. Kukul on a big run. Now Albert goes high. I think that's the smartest move. Go high. And Kukulon got low on Sierra. The 25 is not going to lead this lap. Kukulon or Stout May. Angel Gutierrez got clear. Outside is held up. They, they just missed the setup on that 41 car. Stout for the lead on Kukulon. Reed's going to try and get by Albert. Richardson then next. Luckily for the 41, he held the top. So he's not really costing drivers too much. Stout led the lap. Jericho protecting the bottom. Trying to get low on Lathan Strickland three wide. Trying to get his lap led bonus points with Evan Hunter just behind him in the 36 car. Down the back straight away. Jericho moving up, trying to get a sniff of draft and kind of smart right there. Got the draft for the six, got a run because of it. Now he's to the inside and has a shot to lead this lap. That was a textbook move out of Chris Jericho right there. But now can he hold it is the question because DeLello and the rest of the field, they're going to have runs back to him into the trial for right here. Here comes the 16. DeLello got a run. I don't think the 18's going to be able to lead this lap. Which sucks for him because he did a really good move on the back straightaway, but just too powerful for the 16. DeLello's going to lead this one. With Martinelli up to second. And there's Matt Tuck. We had talked about trying to get the victory lane as an underdog, an upset story. He nearly did back in the spring. And now here he is, third place, nearing the midpoint. Nathan Stapleton. Looking for his first ever win. Looking for Chip Ganassi Racing's first win in a long time. He's up inside the top five with Henry Guo. Bardo Haas Racing's never finished inside the top ten. Could today change things for that zero car? Martinelli to the front with Matt Tuck to second with them. They pass the 16 of DeLello, a Roush car. And now Tuck wants the lead for Martinelli. Those two are battling for Rookie of the Year honors. First and second in those points. They're going to be side by side to lead the 16th lap here at Talladega. Who's going to get it? That was close. Maybe too close to call. Matt Tuck, by a few one thousandths of a second, leads the lap for five points. Keegan Thompson up to second. Colin Lewis with him. And then Belladonna, two more lap cars up the road. Those are the ones that spun off. Sebat Osgin. And then Fitzwater, Martinelli looked to split to the middle. No room there. Colin Lewis goes low. He has Atkins with him. Lord Chung, and here comes Mathis. Oh, we're wrecking at the back. It's Noel Lawrence up into Albert. And Mitchell Collins in a big crash. Brett Sierra, the point there is upside down. Sierra tumbles, and the caution is out. The points leader with a terrible crash. Lewis back around in front. Oh my. That's how quickly things can change. Talked at the beginning of the race. All the points contenders dread coming to Talladega. And that's the reason right there. Anything can happen around any corner. It likely wasn't Brett Sierra's fault, but he got the worst of it. And the points leader, as it stands is going to lose even more points to the guys behind him with a second straight dismal race. Jack Carter involved. We saw Albert. We saw Sierra flipping down the banking. Noel Norris took some hard hits. Benny Lynn. Here you see Fitzwater and Oskin. They get back up with Nathan Baird, Sarah Kirchner. That's the caution they wanted to see. Mitchell Collins collected. Hunter Reed, Matthew Burnett. I think 
these round cars and the rest were fine. So it looks like it wasn't a big crash. Well, big in, it was big in terms of the hits that were taken, not big in terms of the number of cars. We've seen definitely a lot bigger. But uh, this one big for a lot of reasons, and one of them's the championship. Brett Sierra, 25 car. Well, now that we have a chance, we'll go check out what happened to bring out the caution flag here at Talladega. Before we get to that, we'll go check out what happened with that first incident as Fitzwater and Osgood spun to the inside, but no yellow flag came out. So we'll take a quick break, come back, and check out some of the incidents that we've had throughout the race so far. Here's the incident that triggered no yellow. Really just kind of everyone going for the same position. Ends up getting five wide. And the Penske cars are going to get together with Osgin. The two and the 81 get together. They go around. Nathan Baird has to take to the grass. Kirchner does basically slam on brakes. So that's what got, got her out of the pack. Those two spun to the inside. No yellow came out for it. They kept on going. And luckily they stayed on the lead lap. They're going to have a shot to try and get spots now towards the end of this race. Now go check out what happened. A big crash in turns three and four collects the points leader, Brett Sierra. An unfortunate scenario for Brett Sierra. Nothing he could do here. He's four wide than the Nolan Lawrence 19. He forces it five wide. Sierra's trying to give room on the bottom. He and Randall just get together down to Collins and then Lawrence. And look at this ride. Brett Sierra through the infield at over 180 miles an hour. He impacts the inside wall. Comes back up. You can see Lawrence in the back. He hit Albert. Sierra up. He clips Reed and then gets clobbered by Carter. Collins into the outside concrete. Sierra upside down. Burnett gets scraped off the wall. Benny Lynn. Sierra not done as he goes up and over again. Down the banking on his roof on the apron. Flips back over and then over on the wheels. Back over on the wheels again. And then over in that 25 car destroyed in the first caution of the EA Sports 500. We have a few angles of this. We'll go check them out. A lot occurring here at Talladega. Here it is again. Down the back straight. And once again, that was... I mean, if you have to put blame on that, even though Noel Lawrence didn't hit anyone to cause it, he still made it five wide at a track where, you know, four wide is already close enough. You cannot go five wide and... That's just the unfortunate part of Super Speedway Racing. You're in this pack, you're in this big pack, and nowhere to go, and Brett Sierra, the points leader, in the middle of it. He's the unfortunate victim of uh, this crash. We'll go take a look at a few more angles. Coming straight at you down the back straight away. There's the contact. Look at this. See how fast he's going through the infield at that point, and then up the track. Hard hit. Upside down and still rolling, still tumbling. Going to be a lot of cars done from this one. We'll go take a look from the onboard of the points leader, Brett Sierra. Hold on, here it is. Brett Sierra, the points leader. Not the view he was hoping to see here today. As we're under the first caution of the race. The EA Sports 500 takes a turn in the championship. The points leader, Brett Sierra, upside down here at Talladega. How close will the points be after this one? We're going to find out when we come back here on JRTV to finish out. 27th race of the season, the EA Sports 500. Lights are on the pace car, will go green at the midway point. Will be 19 laps completed, 19 laps to go when we take the green flag. The cars out from their crash are Jason Albert, Jack Carter, Noel Lawrence, Benny Lynn, and Brett Sierra. So the fortunate part for Sierra, he finishes the highest of the cars at DNF, but still back in 38th place with 37 cars running. A few of them are with damage. Mitchell Collins just came off pit road. Angel Gutierrez had to make a pit stop in the number 14, maybe just want some tires and just to check at that car. We'll see how good Fitzwire is going. He has some slight damage, but how bad is it? Osgin obviously has some slight damage as well. We'll see how bad that is. And then we'll see how bad Hunter Reed and Matthew Burnett are. So the, the cars that we're gonna have to worry about being slow, the 17, the 45, I don't know if they're gonna be that slow. They're gonna be slower. I just don't think they're going to be that slow. 33, 22 should be up to pace. I think the 81, the 2 should be pretty good. 14 should be good. And the 12 is probably going to be the slowest car out there of the cars that are left. So we have Colin Lewis in the lead. 
Second place, Roberto Crown Jr. Remember, he led early on. He led a few laps in a row. Then we have Justin Atkins in third, Laura Chung in fourth, and Luke Rainey quietly up in fifth place, looking to try and gain on that points lead. They have Tyler Belladonna in sixth, Mathis Wells in seventh, Conrad Evans in eighth, Keegan Thompson ninth, and Bibi Ruiz makes it a melling bookend of the top ten with Lewis in the lead, and his team owner and teammate Bibi Ruiz in tenth. Pace car back in. We'll start the 20th lap here in the EA Sports 500 as we take the green flag. Colin Lewis in the 91 with the race lead. Pulling low a little bit right there. He maybe wanted a better jump. I don't know. The green flag back out. He got that jump if he wanted it. And with the plates on these race cars, it's going to take them about a lap to a lap and a half to get up to full song. So they're still going to be building speed all the way throughout this lap. That's why you don't want a big gap. Punch a really big hole in the air, and those guys get up to speed. They uh, they gain speed a lot faster when they're getting the draft off you, and they can move right up to the back bumper of your car. Front two stay clear, single foul. Wells trying to get down from Keegan Thompson, but couldn't. Thompson forced to the inside of the number five car. He'll move up to fifth from that move. And a big move out of Atkins and Crown at the same time into the trioval three wide for the race lead. Big move out of Justin Atkins. Is he going to lead this lap? Colin Lewis kept it in the 91 on the outside. But now Thompson goes four wide to the bottom. And at the back, some of the cars that had to come through damaged cars. 33, 22, some of those guys, they got held up a little bit. Zydell, an issue to the apron in the 24 car. Justin Zydell looking to break the windless drought here at Talladega. Is out of the pack now with an issue on the 24 car. It held up Jericho Bright. It held up Strickland and Kukulon. Can those guys form a lane to get back into this main draft? At the front, Thompson leads. That helped Kirchner catch up in the 33. Richardson's back there, fourth in points. Spurley to third in the points is up balance for second. That helped Kirchner out though, because those guys are going to keep the draft. The pack was spread out enough. They're going to keep the draft. Kirchner now, she got a big gift from that. I think she should be able to stay up here with those guys. Jay Randall's also back there in the 97 car. Riley Spurley, too, with a move. See Kirchner and Randall trying to just cling on. Then they have Nathan Baird. Here comes Matt Tuck to the bottom. A big move. Spurley trying to lead some more laps to try and get the most laps. Lead bonus points. Now that he knows Brett Sears out of the race without a shot to get a lap lead. Burley to the lead, Matt Tuck to second in the 32. Field of three wide at the front. Tuck going for the lead now into the trial. Here comes Anthony Hernandez. Been quiet today. Now when it matters most, he might make the most noise. That number one car. Thompson around the outside. That five car has been strong today. Running the top and making it work. That time he couldn't get clear, but he got a great run. Showing the strength that five car has. That might be one to watch towards the end of the race if he has the track position. Hernandez wants the lead from Spurley Tube. Then he has his two teammates lined up. Ryan Wilson, Eli Bright, just by Tyler Belladonna. Here comes Wilson. The car is lined up on the bottom lane. 1.15.8. Is that what they want here? Can they keep it like that? Or Wilson, the pole sitter, get impatient. Will Eli Bright get impatient? 15 laps to go at the line. Strickland got impatient. But last season's teammate of those cars says this season you guys are not going to be doing that with me here. And here's Kirchner. She was just out of the main pack, but now here she is back in it in that number 33 car. 15 laps to go. Justin Adele's final lap down, but still in the running as it stands. Ryan Wilson for the lead on his teammate. Here comes Jericho. Still doesn't let a lap for five bonus points. Neither has Keyshawn Richardson. The 99 leaves the 18 to go four wide for second place. Mathis Wells going four wide on his own row. Wilson back where he started the race, out in front. Richardson, that was a great run going to him. Can he keep the run off four? There he goes, and Mathis Wells is with him. Wells isn't going to help him, though. They're up there in that championship fight together. He's saying, you know, I'm not helping you towards the front. He's got to get it himself. Mathis Wells will lead the lap for five, or not for five points, but try to get closer to the five points for leading the most laps. There's Luke Rainey. I don't believe the 88's led a lap here today. So maybe now he can get it done and 
Try and gain on Brett Sear. Remember, as of late, the 88's been very, very good and has quietly moved his way up in the points, up to sixth. Matt Tuck, though, being aggressive today. And here comes the man who beat him in the spring. Evans hasn't made much noise today until now. 31 is in it again. Saw Atkins and uh, Martinelli were playing games down to the yellow line into the corner. I thought they were going to enter on the apron. Luckily, I think uh, they gave each other enough room there into the corner, made it work. Evans looking out on Matt Tuck. Tuck could not clear. Brainy gets the push from Colin Lewis. Around the outside he goes to lead the lap for five points and maybe get clear of the pack into turn one. He's clear of the 32. Not clear of Evans quite yet. Evans keeps it to the inside. Got a push from Keegan Thompson. 13 laps to go at Talladega. They battle side by side. Let's get to our Gatorade audience analysis. Last week, we'd asked which driver yet to win in the Winston Cup Series will get their maiden in victory first. Oh, around they're going, though. No, they're not. Someone just scraped the wall. We stand under the green flag for now. We had a few cars get to the wall. Now they're five wide, though. Oh, there they go. Into the wall hard. Big crash. Oh. RCR cars. Luke Rainey we just talked about. Here comes some guys around the outside. And the pole sitter, Ryan Wilson. Yellow for the second time here at Talladega. Keegan Thompson on the, on the race back leads. Mathis Wells, I think, just got away with that. And so did Chris Jericho. They were back in the middle of it. Wells, I think, was just in front. Jericho, I think, somehow missed it. I think Riley Spurgeon as well. That is... Whew. Those guys took a hard hit. Those cars basically came to a dead stop. Rainey drives away. Evans is done. Kukulon's done. Woe's going to be done. Thompson waiting for the pace car. Let's get back to our Gatorade on analysis. Which driver will get their uh, maiden win first? People said Ryan Wilson. Unfortunately, he's uh, now going to be done for the day. And that number 15. 42% said Sarah Kirchner. She's still in it inside the top 10. This week, we're going to ask about the point system. How many points should the winner of Winston Cup Series race get? Right now, they get 175, and then five bonus points for leading a lap to equal 180. So should it stay at 175? Should it go up to 185? Should it be 190? Or should it be 200 or more? So get your uh, votes in on that, and we'll show you the results next week at Richmond. We'll go check out what happened. A crash off turn number four. They got five wide after some issues on the back straightaway. Keegan Thompson, the race back, but... Luke Rainey, who's trying to move himself up, up in points, collected in this one, the 88 car. So how big was it for Luke Rainey not to get clear into turn one? Well, down to turns three and four. He's up top. They're going to be four wide. Mathis Wells is in the middle of it in the number 20. Guo trying to give room, but gives too much room. He gets down to Kukulon. Up the track they go. Across Tucks and Wells' nose. Richardson in the middle of it. Missed it. Chris Jericho. Missed it. Wow. See, Strickland Hernandez, they basically came to stops. Ryan Wilson. Did he stop in time? I think he may have. This may have only been a four-car crash. What a crash it was. Uh, right there, Wilson does hit off the zero, so trying to get away fast enough. But, wow, there were some hard hits in that because you saw how fast those cars st slowed down and basically came to a stop. That just shows how much energy was dissipated when they hit that concrete, go take a look for a few more angles. We definitely have some onboards to show because a lot of our championship contenders were up in the middle of it. Here it is in full speed. Yeah, it's just they got five wide. Once again, just seeing a lot of five wide today. And that's the end result of five wide here at Talladega. You don't normally get away with it. See right there, that takes out four cars that are looking for good days. Now let's go on board the championship competitors. Mathis Wells, Keyshawn Richardson, Chris Jericho, all three were back around it and narrowly avoided disaster. Here's second and points, Mathis Wells. He'll be middle of the five wide right here through turns three and four. And watch how close. If he wins the championship for the second straight season, I look back on this one right here to say, that's the reason, that, that's the reason why I won it. It's now going forth Keyshawn Richardson, another championship competitor who narrowly missed out on this one. Here's Richardson just behind Mathis Wells. Look at Wells and Tuck. 
They're going to be the first two to narrowly miss this. Look at Richardson. Oh, my goodness. And then just behind Richardson was Chris Jericho. He narrowly missed it. Let's go for the 18. And the line of three to make it through the final one. Chris Jericho on the 18. Watch this. Cars all around him. If he goes any lower, there's cars down there. Woohoo! He found the one hole he could get through. Chris Jericho makes it, has a clean race car. He's still in it to win it. But he's got to try and get by Keegan Thompson, who leads the EA Sports 500 here at Talladega. Ten laps of racing to go at the green flag. Keegan Thompson trying to hold on for his first Super Speedway win since Talladega in 2000. A few more cars out from that crash, including Special Kukulon, Conrad Evans, Luke Rainey. Who well stayed in it so far in the 33rd position. We'll see how slow that zero car is. Hopefully in 10 laps we don't catch him. Right now, Glow in 33rd. Zydell currently back in 35th. He'll gain another spot up to 34th, but still trapped one lap down. For some of those guys that were maybe up to speed at the back that got, you know, slowed up by damage cars like Gutierrez and Baird. Osgood maybe even. They could have a shot to stay in this pack now. I don't think there's going to be damaged cars in front of them. So you have Keegan Thompson in the lead. Second place to Lord Chung. Atkins in third. Brando in fourth. Stapleton in fifth. Colin Lewis is sixth. Sarah Kirchner seventh. Matt Tuck eighth. Crown Jr. in ninth. And Mathis Wells second in the points. Going for his second straight Super Speedway win. He's in tenth. You have Miller in eleventh. Gary twelfth. Richardson thirteenth. Bright fourteenth. Martinelli fifteenth. They have Sprague to sixteenth. Hunter seventeenth. Stout eighteenth. Ruiz nineteenth. Belladonna twentieth. Delello 21st, Jericho 22nd, Strickland 23rd, Hernandez 24th, Gutierrez 25th, Baird in 26th, Osgood 27th, Wilson 28th, Fitzwater 29th, Burnett 30th, Collins 31st, Reed 32nd, Quo 33rd, and Zidell in 34th. That's the field for the green flag. Ten laps remain at Talladega, and Lord Chung spins the tires on the restart. Thompson gets away, but here at Talladega, not so good of a, of a thing to get a big lead because the draft is going to pull everyone right back together, and they'll have a big run onto him. I don't know if Chung was laying back and she just mistimed it or if she hit the gas tour and spun the tires and maybe the five car off guard. But whatever it is, these guys are going to have a massive run coming to Keegan Thompson down into turns three and four and off of four. Already see the 24 is kind of off the pace. So whatever the issues were, that might have been mechanical in the 24 and then Henry Guo as well with that damage. Hopefully we don't catch him in these final 10 laps. Keegan Thompson, car number five with the lead. Laura Chung trying to get to him. Nathan Stapleton and Chung move out. Thompson's going to keep clear because of it. Stapleton for second on Laura Chung. Nine laps to go at Talladega. Baird trying to stay with him. I just don't know if the 22 has the pace. Neither does the 81. But the rest of the field is in it. 25 cars. Gutierrez is back in it for the first time since that restart early on. Here comes Rando. Here comes Matt Tuck. He's been one of the few cars that can pass everyone out here, no matter who it is up front. Eli Bright, though, shuffles him to the middle in the eight. There's Delello. Jericho trying to come back up to the front. And number 18 car, that green 18, behind the 77 on the bottom. They're moving up together. Eight laps to go at the line. Thompson's still in the lead. Crown Jr., who led a bunch of laps early on, coming back to the front. I think, though, that five, he's looked like maybe the strongest car here. Whenever he gets shuffled up top, it doesn't matter. He's able to hold it pretty well. So now that he's out front in that clean air, someone's got to find a way to get a big run onto him and get someone to go with them. They can't have someone on the fives bumper when they make the move. Maybe right here. Crown's going to stay low off corner exit. He was able to keep that car down to the bottom. He has up from Jericho, who's looking to lead a lap for the first time today for five bonus points. Jericho's going to have to maybe make a move off four here. I don't think he's going to have a run to three to make it work. He's getting to try and do it off four into the trioval. He needs to back up a little bit, get a run off four, forward momentum, and then hang the left. There he goes, but oh, he didn't have the run to make it work, and Hernandez moves low first. So the 18 still yet to lead a lap. Crown Jr. leads another one, the 43 car. Seven laps to go in the EA Sports 500. Hernandez three wide. DeLello's another car, like the five. Gets put up high. Was able to hold it for a little bit. Hernandez to the lead. Bibi Ruiz to second. Then Jordan Stout from inspection failure. Back in 41st. He's now up for third. On his teammate Zach Delello. Six laps to go at the line. Four wide to the corner. Oh, and 
Jordan Stout, I think at the last second, realized he had a car to his inside because he was moving down like Martinelli was not there. And then finally, maybe he noticed at the last second, maybe a spotter called it for the near disaster for most of the field. Four cars break away from the three and four wide action behind. Ruiz going for the lead on Hernandez. Six laps to go. Here comes Ruiz's teammate, Colin Lewis, to the end center trying to help his Melling Ultra car out to the front. There they are. First and second on the bottom. Great team picture. Already up the road, Henry Guo. Zero car. Oh boy. Four wide looking for the lead into turn three. Ruiz just got down from his teammate, but Jacob Miller keeps the bottom. That zero car is going to cause some issues. Henry Guo coming back to five to go. Miller moves up. Here comes Kirchner and Keyshawn Richardson making the big move, looking for five bonus points. Mathis Wells with him, second in the points. Richardson led the lap, five points, five to go. Mathis Wells trying to at least stay bottom for him when he catches the zero car. Who knows what lane's going to get held up, though. There's Guo, just up the road, down the back straightaway. This is going to be the only time we catch him, but it's going to be a crucial stage in the race. A pack bearing down. Pack of 25. Front three are clear. They might have a good time just going to the outside right here. There they go. Sweeping around the top. So the top lane gets through, but now the top gets blocked. All right, everyone's going to be focusing for the middle here or the bottom. Chris Jericho's back here. Riley Sprojude's back here. Third and fifth in the points. Might be out of the running now with just four laps to go. They might be too far back. And Sprojude's still held up. Sprojude's going to be out of it. He'll gain points on Brett Sierra, but not as many as he was hoping. And Chris Jericho's going to have to try and hope he can just get whatever he can now. Pick off cars one at a time. Richardson's still in the lead, but Mathis Wells is second. Thompson, can he lead that second pack up to this front pack? These guys keep battling. He definitely could. Three laps to go at the line. Next lap car would be Zydell. I don't know if we're going to catch him, though. I don't know what that 24 is a mechanical issue. Three wide. Nathan Stimpton, a push from Tyler Belladonna to the inside of two of our front five of the points. Three laps to go. Nathan Stimpleton leads the EA Sports 500 late. That pack back there, they need to get single file. They're looking three wide. They need to try and get single file because these guys are battling. They can easily run them down. Matt Tuck is up here with a shot. Jacob Miller has a shot. A few underfunded. Could they get to victory lane? Underfunded in that pack. Angel Gutierrez, the 14. Colin Lewis in the 91. Jude Martinelli, teammate of the 77. Looking four wide for the lead. Kirchner with a move. Miller gets down in front. Jacob Miller leads for CLR Racing. Thompson joins the party with the rest of the crowd. Now Lord Chung, Colin Lewis, Gutierrez, Crown, Bright, Evan Hunter, and Tim Gary, the MB2 cars. Strickland and Martinelli. Two to go at the line. Kirchner looking to get by Miller. Miller not giving much room as Richardson goes bottom. Two laps to go. Sarah Kirchner leads in the 33, but Keyshawn Richardson has to run to the end side and gets by. Richardson. Fourth in the points to the lead. Only one win this season. But Keegan Thompson's been fast today and lap traffic is his teammate Zydell ahead. Here comes Thompson. Here comes Laura Chung. She's never won. Colin Lewis has never won. Four wide for the lead. Can Thompson get clear? He can't. Lewis holds the bottom. But here comes Crown Jr. One win in his career. And Evan Hunter looking to make it three for three at Super Speedways in his career. And we're going to catch Zydell here coming to the white flag. 24 cars going to be caught. Which lane goes, which lane doesn't. Brando with Stout behind him. Crown Jr. is going to take the white flag with the lead. Hunter on the bottom with him. One last time around Talladega. Evan Hunter with the move into turn one. Jude Martinelli with him in the 67. Zydell moved down. It's going to be about five cars for the race win. Hunter to the lead. Jude Martinelli for Jess for more sports up to second. Jordan Stout from 41st is moving up to the inside. Down the back straightway for the final time. Everyone shuffling around. Martinelli stays clear of the six for now. Can he get a run on Evan Hunter? 
punchers, not one since the season opening Daytona 500. Now he leads through turns three and four looking for his second win of the season. Into the travel, they're gonna have to deal with Hunter Reed. Evan Hunter to the bottom of the racetrack. He's gonna stay out in front as we catch Hunter Reed. He gets hold up to the top. Jude Martinelli to the inside. Who got it back to the line? Hunter got flipped by Hunter Reed, but held on to win. Evan Hunter wins the EA Sports 500 at Talladega. Three wins on his career, all three at Super Speedways. Talladega in 2001, Daytona earlier this season, and now Talladega today. Evan Hunter, he, he might be the Super Speedway master. Oh my. He's been fighting this, you know, for a lot of the season he had been fighting up inside the top five in points. As of late, had really dropped down in the point standings. But here today, it's the big win should keep him inside the top ten in points and maybe moving up back towards the top five. Who knows? Big momentum boost for Evan Hunter, who, remember, as we had said, after qualifying, he said, not worried about qualifying. I'm worried about how that race goes. And he didn't have to worry because that car was, was fast enough to, uh, to have a shot at the end. Evan Hunter with the win here at Talladega and a near photo finish with Jude Martinelli trying his best to steal it at the end but came up just short in second place. Here are the finishing results from the EA Sports 500. Hunter with the win as mentioned. Martinelli also close, ends up in second. Third place goes to Jordan Stout from 41st up to third. He'll definitely take that. Fourth to Roberto Crown Jr. in the top five for Colin Lewis in the 91. Sixth place goes to Laura Chung. How about Angel Gutierrez? Seventh place for AJ Foyt Racing. A big confidence booster there for that driver and team. Nathan Stapleton, eighth. Uh, ninth place to Lathan Strickland. And Tim Gary bookends the top ten for MB2 here today. Eli Bright ends up in 11th. Twelfth goes to Jay Brando. Matt Tuck, 13th. Tyler Belladonna in 14th. And the top 15 for Mathis Wells, who entered second in the points. 16th to Jacob Miller. Keegan Thompson, 17th. There's fourth in the points. Richardson, top 20 and 18th. And Kirchner and DeLello complete the top 20. The down here at Jericho held up by lap traffic. 23rd. Raspberry Tube also the same there. 25th. They'll gain points on Brett's here, but not as many as they were probably hoping for when the 25 got collected in the crash. And a lot of cars were really slow here today. I mean... I don't know what happened. It, it was like everyone that was slow was really slow. No one was just a little slow. Everyone was very slow. Nathan Baird fell 20 seconds back. Fitzwater and Burnett were in that pack. So was Ryan Wilson, Smith Osgin, and Mitchell Collins. But we had Hunter Reed so slow. Henry Guo was very slow. Justin Zidell slow. And then 35th on down out from the crash, including Brett Sierra, who ends up in 38th here today. The points lead will dwindle as uh, basically everyone around him in points uh, gained something on him here today. We take a look at the points. Sierra still holds on to the points. He had a big lead entering today. Mathis Wells on the rest of the crowd really closed in in the championship fight in these final five races. It's getting a little interesting now. We looks like Brett Sierra maybe run away with it. Two back-to-back -back bad races. It's wide open again. So, uh, yeah, and they were probably the two wildest races we had left on the season, right? Lowe's and Talladega, everyone goes into those wondering how what's going to happen and, you know, how crazy it's going to be. Well, we just saw how crazy they were and what happened uh, down to the end of those ones. But, man, these points uh, could get even wilder. As a uh, next race out, short track racing under the lights Saturday night here on JRTV. Going racing at the Richmond International Raceway for the Chevy Rock and Roll 400. I know a lot of Chevy teams have some special you know, band paint schemes that they're going to run in the Chevy Rock and Roll 400, which uh, Chevy wanted them to do. So it's going to be fun to see and see if we can uh, catch all the bands on the cars next week on JRTV at Richmond. Under the lights on Saturday night. Always a fun one at Richmond, and uh, we'll see how it goes next week on JRTV. Today it's all about Evan Hunter, his second victory of the season. Congratulations to that 36 team on the race victory. We'll see you guys next week on JRTV at Richmond.